Truly, I cannot comprehend your reasoning for keeping this vital information from us. What's really baking my noodle is how we weren't affected. I mean, I'm from an adjacent universe to that one and nothing, as far as I know. Well, maybe it's because you're from different universes. Or maybe it only affects whoever's in the chair and is therefore the prime. All I know is that I've got seven days. But if my hunch is right, there's still a way that I can beat this thing. Whoa, I lost the connection there for a moment. Is everything okay? Well, it will be. Hopefully. Welcome to the final marvellous legend of this set, with your hosts, the Fantabulous Funksters. Being myself, Funky Monkey, the fearless chronicler, Fellow Monkey, Hail True Believers, and the magnificently multi sighted Funky M. Yo! <clears throat> and of course, the incredible, competent, courageous, and clever Kelvinathan Cat, commanding officer of the USS Dragonfly, is there and. I'm not that courageous, nor clever, nor com not even competent. Uh, these attributes belong to my beautiful girlfriend, Lady Agatha Red Silbert Sinclair, which is you. That's me. Lady Red Sinclair is travelling back from an away mission, but she'll be with us via communicator. Anyway, last episode had a bit of a down ending, with the villain victorious and half the universe wiped out. Let's remedy that. And since I might end up a pile of dust myself in the next seven days, I'd best take this chance to read off the introduction. Released in 2019, Marvel's Avengers Endgame is the culmination of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe to date. To that date anyway. Thanos has wiped out half the universe, and destroyed the only means of restoring it. But a new player will bring hope and a finale worthy of this franchise. Keep in mind though, that this one weighs in at a hefty 181 minutes. Though the fans didn't seem to mind, as both they and the critics gave it rave reviews. At least according to Rotten Tomatoes. So then, true believers one and all, without further ado, we present the 8th Marvelous Legend, and the second of our two-part finale, Marvel's Avengers. End game. So where was Clint Barton in all of this? After Civil War, Clint cut a deal with the authorities and gave up the life, returning to his family instead. It was a condition of this deal that he stay out of heroing. Um, yeah? Yeah? I am in the Earth sector, and I think I've passed the flying blonde on the ship. Might be Tony and the survivors of Titan. Uh, they are adrift in space right now. And it ain't looking good. Until Captain Freakin' Marvel turns up to rescue him, that is. Okay, so we ain't talk about Captain Marvel, but Hugh is like a fighter pilot in the 80s and 90s. Plot, 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 powers by accident, blah, 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 space stone, mind wiped by bad guys, revelation, gets memory back, big set piece, page to Nick Fury, and scene. Which is why she turns up here, and brings Tony and Neb back to Earth. The sole recompense being the execution of the Mad Titan, is cold comfort. Know then, that following the great semi-side of the universe, the collected Infinity Gems served no further purpose to the Mad Titan, excepting as temptation to commit further atrocities. To this end, Thanos used their own power, to unmake them. And for five earthen years, what was done could not be undone. Until the craziest thing of all happens in San Francisco. Now, we skipped over the second Ant-Man movie, but in short, 
Hank Pym used Scott Lang's connection to the Quantum Realm to rescue his lost wife Janet, and the daughter of one of Pym's former partners, Ghost, was in need of quantum energy to survive. And so it was in what was supposed to be a routine collection of quantum energy that Scott was left adrift, because that's when the snap happened. And you know the rest. But the world Scott Lang returns to is far removed from the one he left that fateful day. Fortunate indeed is he, however, that his daughter remains among the living. And there's only one place to go. It is a curious fact of the quantum realm that time flows in an uneven fashion. Thus, while five years passed at the scale of you and I, Scott Lang experienced only five hours. The temporal instability of the quantum realm inspires our heroes to seek the gems of infinity in the times before their unmaking. Thus do they seek the aid of the Iron Man. Shame that he is not interested. And look at the Hulk. Okay, okay, hold up here. I thought that the Hulk was supposed to be like bestial and dumb, pure and filtered rage, that kind of deal. He's wearing shirts now. Well, during the time skip, Bruce and the other guy came to an understanding and here we are. Curiosity, however, is a wonderful and terrible thing. Can't be worse than trying to brute force time travel. Enter Tony with the solution to this thorny problem. A fully functioning space-time GPS. Would be nice to revisit most of the famous points in history. Or maybe go forward to the future and see what that's like. <laughs> I'd need to have a future first. But we won't go into that. Let's just move on. It is a greater difficulty, however to alleviate the malaise of the god that failed. Or to convince a Ronin to accept a master once more. We interrupt this video to bring you an important message on time travel. While in this universe you could just take a starship and fly it around the sun, in this movieverse it's quite different. Here you have more than one timeline. Which gives you enough of leeway and freedom to act. Yep, big up. And so, after a successful test, the mission is on. Oh, oh, Batty New York! Then I shall observe the happenings of Asgard. Which leaves me with Morag and Vormir. Let's get to it. Okay, so it's 2012, Loki's still the biggest bad that we've seen so far, and them Shaitauri are wrecking the joint. Bruce has the hardest job. But my man do be getting the Ancient One on side though. And how? Well, two ways. First, by promising to return the Time Stone to the moment from when he got it. And second, by letting slip that Doctor Strange gave it away anyways. Though it don't help that an angry Hulk blows the Space Stone grab. And it's Cap versus Cap for the Mind Stone. But Tony's got an idea about that Space Stone. And some more Pym Particles to get them home again. So, yeah, three for three. It is in the year of 2013 that the Odin Sun must gather the Ether. Though Thor is beset by doubt and shame, it is the Lady Frigga that shall offer the comfort that only a mother can give. And through the machinations of the Rocket Raccoon, the gem of reality is retrieved. But in 2014 is when things really start to go wrong, when Nebulae the Twain meet, giving Thanos all the information he needs to stop the undoing. And worse, future Nebula is taken, and past Nebula takes her place. But that's nothing compared to the price of the Soul Stone. Either way, that's two for two. And so the stones are set. And it falls to the Hulk to undo the great mistake. Sadly, the glow of victory is short-lived. For you see, dear viewer, it is the sad <coughs> truth of this tale. That... My dear chronicler, I hate to interrupt you as you're in full flow, but, uh... Funky M, can you see my aura yet? 
Yeah. Yeah. There it is, your aura. You were right, it worked. Wait, what happened? Well, it seems that there was some prophecy that the magic of the snap would unmake the prime or something. So I reasoned that after the unsnapping, that I'd be restored as well. Which seems to be what's happened. Long story, don't ask. Either way, I'm betting that if I take these off, I'm not just going to immediately disappear. Ah, anyway, sorry for interrupting you, my dear Master Chronicler. As you were saying. Indeed. Then let us return to the caption. For it is the sad truth of this tale that the Nebula of 2014 has allowed her mad titan father to advance his ambitions, that he may now commit omnicide and replace all of what is with what shall only know gratitude that its god allows it to live. Avengers Compound is destroyed. And in the wreckage, Hawkeye gets the gauntlet. Witness the arrogance of a mad titan that merely awaits his destiny brought unto him upon a silver platter. And they fight! Notable moments in the fight. Cap wields Mjolnir. Thanos' army is met by Wakanda and the returned heroes. Giant Man rescues Hulk, Rocket and War Machine. Captain Marvel enters the fray. And the big switcheroo. But there can only be one winner in all of this. And Tony Stark is Iron Man. Tony gives the blighter a taste of his own medicine. And Thanos and all of his Shaitari army are snapped away. Huh. Couldn't happen to a nicer mad titan. Rotten oblivion, Thanos! So passes Anthony Edward Stark. Saviour of Humanity. And Cap returns the stones to their proper place in history. But he only goes and takes the scenic route back. And so our movie ends happily, as Cap and Peggy are finally reunited. So then, that was Avengers Endgame. And with that, the Infinity Saga. And with all of that, phases 1 to 3 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Opinions then, fellow monkey. I deem this legend worthy of remembrance. Funky M? Yep, it's a thumbs up from me. And what about you, Cal? Lady Agatha and I laughed, yelled, and were weeping. In especially the scenes where Tony met his father and Thor met his mother were... Oof. Heart wrenching. And of course, the fight be between Clint and Natasha concerning the question who will do the sacrifice. Which was a really cool choreographed thing, but that uh, so, so sad. Indeed. The Vormir scenes are the ones that are as tragical as they are comical. Concerning the rest of the movie, it's a fun, spectacular flick that tells an intelligent story of how to come out of an all encompassing uh, cliffhanger that we had in Infinity War. That being said, this movie has its light hearted moments too. Kevin, I still quote, okay, there, everyone, in a way. Indeed we do. And of course, the scene where Bruce Hulk sees Hulk roaring and jumping away, you can see him cringe. And then he has to pretend that he's the Hulk, so he rips the, his shirt, goes to a car, taps it slightly, and does the roar. I find it quite hilarious. This was a great one. And what do you think, Frankie? Well, what can I say? This is the culmination of everything that has come before, and a satisfying resolution of the cloud that they left hanging over us for a year! But let's get to the performances, for what they are. And all of the principal cast are on point, even heartbreakingly so, as Tony Stark lashes out at the world on his return to Earth. And really, it is Tony's, Robert Downey Jr's film. For all the ensemble cast, his is the story that drives the plot along. Stark knew that the end game was out there, in the stars beyond, and for all that it killed him, a mere mortal human to wield the stones, he was determined to rid the universe of Thanos, before Thanos rid himself of the universe. 
but it'd be a great disservice not to mention Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, who shows off all of the emotion of trying to keep on keeping on, in the face of half the universe being wiped out. And we can't talk about performances without talking about the CG, because so much of it was in the digital performances. Josh Brolin, Mark Ruffalo, the team of Bradley Cooper and Sean Gunn that brought Rocket to life, all of this blends CG with an actor's performance on set, so much so that suspension of disbelief takes over. Which brings us to the flow, and even at 181 minutes, including extended credits, this movie doesn't feel bloated or rushed, everything is precisely where it needs to be, although the long final battle can be a little bit wearying, as the ebb and flow of the battlefield runs back and forth. So is it flawless? No. The biggest flaw is that the entire Time Heist plotline was based on the entirely random chance that a rat in a long stay car park ran over the controls for a van based quantum tunnel. Still, it's a nitpick at best, as something had to move the plot along. And as we're talking about the entire story up to this point, I will say that the Marvel Cinematic Experiment, for all of its moments of Dark World, or Captain Marvel blasting Yon Rog a Gooden instead of just smacking him about with her fists, has been consistently entertaining, well told, and just about any one of these movies is worth returning to, time and time again. So, in summary, yes, I'm going to put both these movies, when viewed together at least, and the entirety of the Infinity Saga into my house of love. Excelsior! And all that remains is to thank fellow monkey, Excelsior! Funky M, peace out humans, and Captain Calvin Cat and Lady Red Sinclair. Thanks for watching. The Florent Crossbow, mes amis, by the way, Kel and Red Sinclair. So for all my co-hosts, and until we meet again, if ever we do, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you adventure, excitement, but above all, safety and a better tomorrow. A hearty Excelsior and so long, folks. Hey folks, Funky again. Thanks for watching this far, and don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Also, check out my Discord channel, linked below. Bye bye now!